Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again, and um, in this tutorial we're going to go over another new feature of Cinema 4D R18. And um, with this one we're going to be dealing with the push apart effector. So I'm going to set up a scene just so I can um, sort of demonstrate uh, what it does. So uh, what am I going to do? Right, let's get some objects in here. I've got a sphere, I'm going to copy this a few times. And then I'm going to dump this in a cloner object. So there we go. And then I'm going to make our cloner object a grid array. And I'm going to stretch out the grid a little. Actually, before I do that, let's give it four. Yeah, OK. So we're going to just push those apart a little bit. And then I'm going to, uh, I don't know, something like that. That'll do. And then we'll fill that up. So we've got loads of them in there. All intersecting as well. And let's make a material for these things. Okay, so the color. Let's um, go down to the surfaces, get the checkerboard. That'll do us for now. Put it on this one. Yep, okay, that's fine. Let's make it reflectant and take advantage of the um, uh, screen reflections. So let's add a GDX and uh, dielectric Fresnel. And let's mix the colors up a little bit. Go to the checkerboard, we'll make this my favorite red. Um, and I don't know, some kind of blue. There we go, that'll do. Let's make it up. Let's make some bright colours. Okay. Nice and bright. There we go. Let's make this red mental. There we go. And then we can copy this and out with this again. So let's make it a bright orange. Yep. Make the blue some kind of disgusting green. <laughs> that can go on this one. So I think you get the idea. Just so we've got something to look at, really. Um, let's go yellow. And I don't know, some kind of weird pink or purple. And for the last one, um, yeah, that'll do. Ooh, what do we want? Let's go for, oh, I don't know. That'll do, that'll do us. Awful colors, but, <laughs> okay, right. So we see we've got our, uh, clone with all our materials on it. Um, I'm going to change the clones to random so they're kind of mixed up. There we go. Right, so what do we want to do? Let's select our clone, go up to MoGraph, go to the effector, and we're just going to randomize their position. Uh, okay, random effector, there we go. And um, Let's randomize. Let's have a look at these. Well, they're all intersecting, which is kind of what I'm trying to set up, really. Um, okay, yep, they're all intersecting in, you know, quite close proximity, so that's good. Let's rotate them as well, so we get some variation on the way the textures are sitting. Okay, yep, that's all random as well. Uh, I'm not going to randomize the scale actually because I'm going to choose the clone. I'll go back to the MoGraph menu, go to the effector, and then go plane effector. Um, we're going to change the fall off to, I don't know, linear. That'll do. And you can see what they're, it's affecting. So um, let's go to the effector parameter, uh, the parameter even, turn off position, and I'm going to affect scale, uniform scale, shrink them down a little bit. Okay, so you can see that 
anything on one side of the plane of factory is shrunk. Anything and anything the other side of it is left alone. Okay, I'm just going to drag out the fall off so it encompasses the whole lot. And just make sure we're still intersecting. Yeah, we've got some intersections there. Okay, that looks good. In fact, I think I'm going to pull the cloner in a little bit in terms of the, um, not the cloner, the random effector in terms of Y position, just so they're a bit closer. Okay, so now we've got a scene cell. You can see that, you know, we've got a lot of intersecting geometry there. Um, I'm just going to turn off this grid as well while I'm at it. There we go. See it a lot better now. So the push apart effector. This is new. It's part of the MoGraph module. So if you select our clone, go to MoGraph effector, and then we've got this new one here, push apart. And it does pretty much what you'd expect it to do. It pushes things apart. So we've got the strength of it. You can see that they're being sucked back in. Uh, the mode. I'll go over that in a second, but and then we've got the radius. So if I lower this to zero, you can see that no, uh, well, it's doing nothing pretty much. It's as if it wasn't there. So turning it on and off, you can see that it's doing nothing. So as you up this radius amount, it will actually start pushing the geometry apart. So let's just crank this up until we get some movement. Ooh. Here we go, got some movement. And these two balls there are no longer intersecting. So if I check around our geometry now, these two look rather close. But yeah, you can see then they're not intersecting any longer. And I'm pretty sure if you scoot around the whole lot. So it's making a calculation about the proximity between the clones. And um, that is sorted out our problem. Uh, you'd expect there to be some problems in here as well. Um, but there isn't. It's it's worked. It's done what it's meant to do. Now you notice the iterations here are on 10. Now I think that is the, how many times it calculates before it's satisfied that um, something happens. Okay, so this setting can be seen as a type of quality controller. The push apart effect works iteratively, repeated application until a condition here the radius between clones is reached. So it obviously when you do this this clone is going to be moved away from its nearest neighbor, but that means it may be moving towards something else. So it has to then run it again. So that's kind of what that is, um, the iterations. So <clears throat> if all you wanted to do was separate out your geometry, so they're not in intersecting. Oh, we've got an intersection there though, and it's because my radius is zero again. There we go. So if you just wanted to push apart your geometry, well, then that's going to do the job for you. Um, yeah, quids in really. Now there's several different modes of the push apart effector. Um, so we've got push apart and then we've got, okay, let's go to the top. We've got hide. Okay. So basically if I put the radius at zero, that's exactly like it was in the beginning. Um, but if we up the radius, instead of um, pushing the objects apart, any objects that have intersect in that fall within this radius uh, amount, instead of pushing it apart, it, it just hides them. It just hides any objects that are intersecting. So if I just crank this up, it'll hide. In fact, I think a hundred was a good. Yeah, okay, so it will just hide geometry that's intersecting instead of pushing them apart. So you, as you can see now, we've still got no, we've got no, okay, even if I, Put it down to 66. Yep. Again, we've got no intersecting geometry because it's hiding the geometry that's intersected. We get a bit of intersection here, but if we turn this radius up, it will actually start hiding it based on the fact that, um, you know, it's detected a ge geometry intersection and wave goodbye to one of them. So that's the uh, hide mode. Uh, scale apart. So let's just bring this down. It sees uh, geometry that's intersecting as the radius, you push the radius up. It then sh starts shrinking clones so they're not intersecting anymore. So 100 seems to be like a golden number there, but like these two here, 
that's a good example. Scale them down, get to that 100 mark. No longer intersecting. So again, it deals with the um, intersections by scaling until that's not happening anymore based on that radius value. Um, and then you've got along X, Y, and Z, and basically all these do is shift um, the position of clones so they're not intersecting, but along these axes. So if I go to X, you can see that they're uh, spread across this axis here, this handle. So if it detects an intersection, uh, let's pull the radius down, there we go. If it detects an intersection, it just starts moving the clones along the X. So there we go. And that's the same story for the Y. So it'll start pushing clones up, up and down. And then we've got the Z axis, which is uh, this way. So it'll push them out along the Z to stop them from intersecting with each other. And that pretty much sums up the um, push apart effect. So it's a good way to control clones um, in a way, you know, especially if it was dynamic, that's a good, that's a really good um, uh, way to think about. It. Actually, if you wanted to set this up and all your objects be dynamic, you dynamic even. Uh, I could set up a floor object, put that underneath, um, give the floor a rigid body tag. It will automatically know that it's a collider, not a rigid body, because it's a floor object. Um, rigid body tag on the cloner. All we've got to say is the collision is on top level, I think. Okay, they're all reacting differently. Great. But you notice there, they've all exploded. Because the reason they've exploded is because you have geometry already intersecting, and uh, its collider shape is around both of these objects. So, bang straight away, but you can avoid that now with the push apart factor. We go back and set this to 100 so there's no intersections. Now these should actually act accordingly. Well, maybe we need a bit more. There we go. And that's the result that you'd expect. So that's just one scenario where that could be uh, that could be useful. So I think that's, that's about it for the push part effector. Um, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, as always, check out the Facebook page, um, the merch store, uh, and if you'd like to help support Digital Meat, um, you can donate on the website as well. All those links I'll put in the description. Okay, guys, that's it. Bye.